In Photonic Internet Circuits, maybe you know that there is one part of the light spectrum which silicon photonics, indium phosphide or even silicon nitride cannot reach. I mean, ultraviolet, of course. But that's about to change because of the commercial demand for UV-capable peaks by companies working on next-generation ion traps for quantum computing. Also, on AR light engines, as well as biosensors in Raman spectroscopy. Introducing Alluvia Photonics, the new adventure by the renowned and brilliant Sonia Garcia Blanco. She has founded a new spin-out company from the Mesa Plus Nanolab Institute at the University of Twente in Enschede. This is one of the most important peak regions in the world. And now there is fantastic breaking news as Optica corporate members Aluvia and Lucida are now joining forces. Here are highlights from their webinar. Probably you have all heard about the quantum advantage and how interesting quantum computing could be in the future. And then uh, you also have heard that uh, uh, to do quantum computing, you need qubits. And then probably you have seen as well that to make a qubit, you need a lot of, um, yeah, a big setup. So you need a lot of light sources, UV, this, and near infrared. You need uh, some optics for light conditioning and some optics for light delivery. So if you want to do a useful demonstration with hundreds or even thousands of qubits, you will need to be able to pass from a complex system like the ones you saw before and or this one into a little chip that you can fabricate on the wafer. However, when you look below 400 nanometers, you realize that yeah, there is a lack of a commercial platform. Where do you get the peaks? And the aluminum oxide platform uh, has a very broad band gap and therefore it can operate from around 200 nanometers till the near infrared in the same platform. So that has quite a lot of advantages and that's how we decided, oh, let's offer this platform commercially. And last November, we started Alluvia Photonics. So uh, what we did was monolithic integration. So the silicon nitride is done by LPCBD, and then we deposit our aluminum oxide by sputtering on top. The, the reason for this webinar, we have recently partnered with Lucida Photonics to develop the first Alluvia PDK. And the Alluvia PDK can be now obtained, well, uh, soon, <laughs> in the coming days, uh, via the Lucida website. And we're planning uh, two uh, MPWs, uh, the first one will be at the beginning of October for a thick layer aluminum oxide for near infrared applications. And the second uh, MP, the third MPW will be at the end of October for the UV applications. And we will get the date, the exact data released next week in the design manual. And if you want to participate in these MPWs, uh, please register via the Alubia website. I'll start with a quick introduction for, for Lucida Photonics. Uh, we're a Belgian-based company. We were founded in 2014, uh, but we do have a much more global presence than 10 years ago, uh, resellers and teams across the across the world. Our, our ethos has always been this, this first time right experience. What we mean by that is in electronic design, you simulate a circuit, you design it, and you click go, and you know it's going to work pretty much every time. And that's a level of maturity that we we still aspire to in photonics. Everyone is sort of working together using the same standard tools. And the other benefit as well in, in the bottom corner is to improve the time to market. Currently for photonics, it's very long lead time, six, nine, 12 months between sort of design and, and testing, uh, which really slows down innovation. So what does our, our platform look like? Well, as I mentioned, we, we have the PDKs. Um, we have different materials, silicon, indium phosphide, silicon nitride, alumina. Uh, we have packaging. Then we have the sort of core engine IPKIS, which is where you, you take the, the tools that the PDK is offer and the technologies and build your designs or sort of do component fabricate or component simulation and design. Um, and then we also have some, some modules that go on top of that. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the Alluvia PDK itself. Currently there, there's all the, the basic blocks that you would expect to see. We've got some MMIs and Y splitters, there's directional couplers, ring resonators, spirals, et cetera. And it, it's all parametric. Um, so something you'll see later is these, these aren't fixed components. If you want to design a ring resonator for a very specific wavelength, then all you have to do is pass in the, the length you need into that ring and it's done. 
but you can see how you can really create these reusable toolkits that if you're making a, an OPA, an optical phase array, and you need 128 lanes or something, it's very easy to, to split the light. Uh, and the promise of quantum computing, when it's been promised since sort of 95, I think people invented the first algorithms, is that the scaling is very different. Uh, and you can see that in this yellow curve, though I give a clock speed, which is much slower for the quantum computing. Uh, at a certain size of problem, it's massively outperforming uh, the classical computer. So really the message from this is that uh, to be able to have effective quantum computers, you need to build them big enough to cope with certain sizes of problems. Yeah. So the problem is not in building very small devices, but is making big enough devices and scaling them up and having higher quality enough that they can outperform these classical computers. And what sort of problems could they solve? I think the most important class that I can think of uh, are chemistry problems. Uh, here you're sort of seeing a, a cartoon of uh, how we do uh, fixation of nitrogen from the air, right? And we do it in these highly industrialized, uh, high pressure, high temperature processes. Uh, but at the heart of what uh, nature uses to do the same processes are, are certain molecules. And we have trouble understanding the reaction chains in these molecules. And so you can go to my colleague, Marcus Soraya here at ETH and ask, uh, where would be an interesting place to start for doing these molecules? And you need basically a thousand perfect quantum bits on a quantum computer. And he would say, that would be amazing. I can go and do lots and lots of different molecules. I'd have a lot of fun with this device. But the problem is that when we build them in the lab, they're faulty. And so in fact, what this means is that we have to put about a million uh, quantum bits as we would build them in the lab uh, into such a quantum computer. Uh, and this is then the target, what we're looking at trying to build in order to build effective quantum computers that are of use to my colleague, uh, for instance, in chemistry and would be hopefully of use to making industrial processes more efficient. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, again, for any questions, feel free to contact uh, info at lucidaphotonics.com or you can also contact Sonia directly. Um, and we hope to be in contact with you soon uh, for your tape outs with Aluvia. <laughs>